Hi guys, I welcome you all to today's discussion on one of the very recent RBA notifications which is going to be very important for our examinations and this one relates to external commercial borrowings and this notification has more precisely provided a new framework with regard to the policy of external commercial borrowings. So guys, this is the notification. So here you can see that this notification has been issued very recently in January 2019. So this notification is titled as external commercial borrowings policy with regard to new ECB framework. And this has been addressed to all category one authorized dealer banks, which are which are involved in external commercial borrowings. So let's talk about this new framework. So it has been decided by the RBI and this has been in the consultation with the government of India that there was a need to rationalize the framework with regard to external commercial borrowings and a rupee denominated bonds in light of the experience gained and the objective was to improve the ease of doing business in India. So that's why these directions they have been issued and these have been issued under the uh, respective sections of the Foreign Exchange Management Act of 1999. And with regard to the date of applicability of this new policy framework, this policy is going to come into force with immediate effect. So here are the key salient features of this particular framework. So first is merging of tracks one and two as foreign currency denominated ECB. So earlier there were different sorts of tracks. There was these different classifications which were there, but now they have been merged and there is now one category termed as foreign currency denominated external commercial borrowings. And similarly, the merging of track three and rupee denominated bonds framework. So track three and the framework pertaining to rupee denominated bonds, it has been again merged and it is now termed as rupee denominated external commercial borrowings. So now these two frameworks are only left. Now the list of eligible borrowers who will be involved in borrowing through ECBs, this has been expanded. So the scope has been widened to include all the entities which are eligible to receive foreign direct investment or FDI. Further, some new entities are, are added like port trusts, units in special economic zones, SIDB, Exim Bank and the registered entities which are engaged in microfinance activities and non-government organizations, they can also borrow under this particular framework. Now, with regard to the lenders, this notification, this particular framework, it says that the lender should be a resident of FATF or IOSCO compliant country. So it should be following those stringent financial norms as are applicable with regard to these international organizations. Further, multilateral and regional financial institutions, individuals and foreign branches, subsidiaries of Indian banks can also be lenders in some specific cases. Now, with regard to the minimum average maturity period of these external commercial borrowings, it says that this period is going to be three years. But, th but then again, there has been some special sort of cases which has been uh, defined in this uh, framework in which the uh, average maturity period can be different from three years. So what this framework talks about external commercial borrowing. So how does this define external commercial borrowings? So it simply says that ECBs, they are commercial loans. So they are loans in uh, business parlance and they have been raised by the eligible resident entities from recognized non-resident entities. So the commercial loans which are raised by eligible resident en entities from recognized non-resident entities, they are going to come under the external commercial borrowings and further they have to confirm to some parameters and they, these parameters, they have been discussed in, in this particular framework. So these parameters, they relate to maturity period, they relate to non-permitted non uses, they relate to uh, cost ceilings, etc. So as we have already discussed, the framework of raising loans through ECBs now has two options. So this AC ECB framework, it comprises the following two options. One is foreign currency denominated external commercial borrowings and the other one is Indian national rupee denominated external commercial borrowings. So if you talk about foreign currency denominated external commercial borrowings, then in this particular framework, the currency of a borrowing can be any freely convertible foreign currency. And in the INR denominated ECB, the currency of borrowing can be Indian national rupees. So these are the two uh, probable frameworks which has been notified. So ECBs, they can be denominated in either foreign currency or in INR. So this is something which we must remember. 
Now let's take a look at the list of eligible borrowers as have been defined in this particular policy framework. So this framework says that all eligible entities, they can receive FDI. Further, the following entities, they are also eligible to raise external commercial borrowings. So we have already seen these entities in the salient features slide as well. So let's quickly revise them. So the entities, they include port, trust, units in special economic zones, CDB, that is Small Industries Development Bank of India, Export Import Bank of India, and the registered entities which are engaged in microfinance activities, that is registered non-profit companies, registered societies, trusts, cooperatives, and non-government organizations. Now, an additional point which has been mentioned here is that with regard to this particular fifth category which we are having, they are permitted to raise only Indian national rupee external commercial borrowings. So this is something which we again should remember. Now let's talk about minimum average maturity period. So as we have discussed that the minimum average maturity period of the external commercial borrowings is going to be three years in general. But then again, there can be some special cases. So let's talk about these also. So it says that manufacturing sector companies they can raise external commercial borrowings with the minimum average maturity period of one year for external commercial borrowing up to US dollar 50 million or its equivalent in INR per financial year. So this MAMP can be one year for manufacturing companies raising ECB up to 5 million USD per financial year. Further, if the ECB is raised from a foreign equity holder and it is utilized for working capital purposes, then general uh, working capital purposes, general corporate for, uh, purposes or a repayment of rupee loans, then again, this can be extended. So very briefly, we should just remember that this minimum average maturity period is three years, but this is not a very strict period. There are some cases in which this period is flexible and it can go down to one year and it can be extended to five years in some special cases. So this is something which we must put in our mind. Now let's talk about the negative list for which the ECB proceeds cannot be utilized. So there is a negative list which has been provided for in this particular framework and with regard to the items in this negative list, the proceeds which we are getting from external commercial borrowings, they cannot be applied to. So what are these activities? So these include real estate activities, investment in capital market, equity investment, working capital purposes except from foreign equity holder, general corporate purposes except from foreign equity holder, payment of rupee loans except from foreign equity holder. So if you have just read the previous slide very carefully, these three points have been taken from the second exception of that particular slide. So for all these purposes, the ECB proceeds, they cannot be utilized. So you cannot utilize the ECB proceeds for real estate activities or for equity investments. And then again, there are some exceptions for uh, if you have got the ECB proceeds from foreign equity holder, as we have already discussed. Now let's talk about the routes for external commercial borrowings. So this framework, it basically provides that ECB, that is external commercial borrowings, they can be raised either under the automatic route or under the approval route. So there are two routes which are being talked about under this particular framework. Now, if you talk about the approval route first, then in this route, the prospective borrowers, they are required to send their request to RBI through their authorized dealer banks for examination. So if you have to get through this approval route, then you need to obtain the approval of RBI and this approval is routed through the authorized dealer banks. Now, if we talk about the automatic route, then in this case, you need not get into touch with RBI. These cases under the automatic route, they are just examined by the authorized dealer category one banks. So this is about the two routes. Now we must be wondering uh, when this, when the two routes will be available, when we can go for automatic route or when we have to go for the approval route. So let's talk about when the automatic route can be used. So the framework says that ECB up to US dollar 750 million or equivalent per financial year, which otherwise are in compliance with the other terms and conditions which are in this particular framework, they will be permitted under the automatic route, not requiring the prior approval of the Reserve Bank of India or RBI. So if you are raising ECBs up to this particular limit, then you can avail this automatic route. Now the designated 
authorized dealer category 1 banks while considering the ecb proposal under the automatic route they are expected to ensure compliance with the applicable ecb guidelines by their constituents so in this regard the application is to be examined by the authorized dealer category 1 banks so they must consider whether all their compliances have been done any contravention of the applicable provisions will invite penal action or adjudication under the foreign exchange management act of 1999 so if the compliances have not been done then the penal action would be there now another important feature of this particular new ecb framework is the loan registration number which has to be obtained in the cases of raising ecbs so this framework it says that any drawdown in respect of an ecb so if you have to draw your money in respect of an external commercial borrowing then it can only happen after the after you obtain this loan registration number from the reserve bank so if you have to draw down your proceeds from ecb you must obtain this number first now how to obtain this number to obtain this number the borrowers they are required to submit a duly certified form which also contains the terms and conditions of the ecb to the designated authorized dealer category 1 bank so you would have to submit the forms to the authorized dealer category 1 banks and this authorized dealer category 1 bank will forward one copy of the form to the concerned department in reserve bank of india for obtaining the loan registration number or lrn now another important feature of this particular framework is the provision of ecb facility for startups so for startups also a special provision have been made and let's talk about the salient features with regard to this uh, ecb facility for startups so authorized dealer category 1 banks they have been permitted to allow the startups to raise ecb under the automatic route so startups can raise ecb under the automatic route as per the following framework which has been discussed So with regard to the eligibility criteria it says that any entity which is recognized as a startup by the central government it can avail this particular ecb facility further lender or the investor it should be a resident of fatf that is financial action task force compliant country and the borrowing can be in the form of loans or non convertible optionally convertible or partially convertible preference shares now if we talk about the maturity period then the minimum average maturity period as in general is going to be 3 years for startups also now if we talk about the currency then the borrowing should be denominated in any freely convertible currency or in indian national rupees or a combination thereof and if we talk about the amount then the borrowing per startup will be limited to usd 3 million or equivalent per financial year either in rupees or in convertible foreign ex exchange or a combination of both and with regard to the end uses it says that for any expenditure in connection with the business of the owner this ecb facility it can be availed and with regard to the uh, security it says that the choice of security to be provided to the lender is left to the borrowing entity that is startup in this particular case now security can be in the nature of movable immovable intangible assets or financial securities etc however issuance of guarantee stand by letter of credit letter of undertaking or letter of comfort by indian banks all india financial institutions and nbfcs is not permitted so you could not avail the different sorts of credit facilities of the banks and financial institutions for availing this ecb facility further it talks about ecb facility for oil marketing companies as well so it says that the public sector oil marketing companies they can also raise ecb for working capital purposes with minimum average maturity period of 3 years from all recognized lenders under the automatic route so there is this exception for oil marketing companies as well which are there in the public sector however the overall ceiling for, for such ecbs shall be usd 10 billion or equivalent in indian rupees and for this particular facility the oil marketing companies they should have a separate board approved policy or procedure in this regard for these ecbs now let's also take a look at some of the restrictions and conditions which have been mentioned in this particular notification so it says that issuance of any type of guarantee by indian banks all indian financial institutions and nbfcs relating to ecb is not permitted so this we have already seen in the startups wala part also further the borrowers are required to report actual ecb transactions through 
from ECB to return through their authorized dealer category 1 bank on monthly basis. So the reporting has to be made through this particular ECB to return. And any borrower who is otherwise complying with the ECB guidelines but has made a delay in reporting the drawdown of ECB proceeds, then that can be, uh, that can be regularized by that default can be made good by payment of late submission fees as well. Further, the primary responsibility for issuing that the for ensuring that the borrowing is complying with the applicable guidelines is that of the borrower concerned. And if there is any contravention, the action would be taken under the FEMA Act. Further, the designated authorized dealer category 1 banks, they are also expected to ensure compliance with these applicable ECB guidelines. So this was all about our discussion. Now let's take a look at some of the important MCQs which can be asked from this particular new ECB framework. So let's start with the first question. Which of the following is not a salient feature of new ECB framework notified by RBI in January 2019? Options are merging of tracks 1 and 2 as foreign currency denominated ECB and merging of track 3 and a rupee denominated bonds framework as a rupee denominated ECB. List of eligible borrowers has been pruned. The lender should be a resident of FATF or IOSCO compliant country. All of the above are features of it. So friends, we have discussed about this new ECB framework which has been very recently notified by RBI and we have seen in this regard that the list of eligible borrowers has not been pruned, rather it has been expanded. So here option number B is not a correct feature. So this is going to be our answer. Next question. As per new ECB framework notified by RBI in January 2019, minimum average maturity period for all ECBs in general will be. Options are 2 years, 3 years, 5 years or none of the above. So this we have also discussed that as per this framework, the minimum average maturity period is going to be 3 years. So the answer to this is going to be option number B. Next question. As per new ECB framework notified by RBI in January 2019, framework for raising loans through ECB comprises of which of the following options? Options are FCY that is foreign currency denominated ECB only, INR denominated ECB only, both of the above or none of the above. So we have discussed this new external commercial borrowings framework and we have discussed that in this regard, this framework, it comprises of both of these options. That is foreign currency denominated ECBs as well as INR denominated ECBs. So the answer to this is going to be option number C. Next question. As per new ECB framework notified by RBI in January 2019, which of the following entities shall be eligible to raise ECBs? Options are port trusts, units in SEZ, all eligible entities to receive FDI, all of the above are eligible. So we have discussed that the list of the eligible borrowers, it has been extended under the new external commercial borrowings framework. And in this regard, all of these, they are eligible. So the answer is going to be option number D. Next question. As per the RBA policy, which of the following is our correct about the routes for raising external commercial borrowings? Options are, under the ECB framework, ECB can be raised either under the automatic route or approval route. Under the automatic route, prospective borrowers are required to send their request to RBI through their authorized dealer banks, both of the above or none of the above. So we have discussed that there are two popular routes for raising external commercial borrowings. One is the automatic route and the other one is the approval route. And further in this regard, we have discussed that under the Approval route, the prospective borrowers, they, they are required to send their request to RBI through their authorized dealer banks. So this second statement is not with regard to the automatic, but with regard to the approval route. So here, the option number one is not going to be correct. So the only correct answer is going to be option number A. Next question, as per new ECB framework notified by RBI in January 2019, which of the following is incorrect about ECB facility for startups? Options are, an entity should be recognized as a startup by the central government as on the date of raising ECB. The borrowing must be denominated in Indian rupees only. The borrowings can be for any expenditure in connection with the business of the borrower or none is incorrect. 
So we have discussed how a new facility has been given under the framework for the startups to raise ECBs. And in this regard, we have seen that the borrowing can be in Indian rupees or in foreign currency or in combination of both. So the option number B, which says that it can be only in Indian rupees, this is going to be the incorrect one. And this is going to be our answer. So guys, these are the answers. So this was all about our discussion on the very recent RBI notification which has given us a new framework pertaining to external commercial borrowings. Thank you.